Imagine you're on a game show. You're presented with three doors, one of which has one million pounds behind it. The other doors have nothing. Your job is to pick the right door. After selecting a door, the game show host opens one of the other two doors and shows you that it doesn't have the money behind it. Then, you'll be asked if you wish to stick with the door you originally chose or the other closed door. The question is whether you're better sticking with the current door or if you're better off switching. You might assume that it makes no difference and that the odds are one in two either way, but in truth the odds are in favour of switching two in three times. To see why, let's make our doors semi-transparent so we can see what's going on. To start with, there's a one in three chance of us picking the right door. Let's pick the first door. At this point, the likelihood of the money being behind one of the other two doors is two in three. Now, our game show host, knowing where the money is, and knowing that we've picked door one, has no option but to open door two, at which point it's clear that switching would allow us to win, and not switching wouldn't. Let's try again with the money behind the second door. Again, we'll select door one, and again there's a two in three chance that we're wrong. Notice that the game show host is again forced to open a specific door, door three in this case. And again, if we switch we win the game. The only time this fails is if we pick the correct door to begin with. In this case, though we were still likely to have picked incorrectly, the game show host can open either of the two doors, and switching will always give us the wrong door. Hence, sticking with our original door will be the right choice only one in three times. Now we have an intuitive understanding for the problem, let's try and prove it using probabilities. Firstly, note that the probability of the money being behind any given door to start with is one in three. Let's assume we'll always select door one, and let's see what door is opened by the host, depending on where the money is. If the money is behind door 1, there's a 1 in 2 chance of the host opening door 2, and a 1 in 2 chance of them opening door 3. If the money's behind door 2, the probability of the host opening that door is 0. If the money's behind door 3, the probability of the host opening door 2 is 1. This information may seem somewhat irrelevant, but if we read what it's telling us, perhaps we can see a different perspective. Effectively, the first probability is saying that the probability of opening door 2, given that the money is behind door 1, is 1 in 2. Similarly, the probability of opening door 2, given that the money is behind door 3, is 1, and so on. It should make sense, then, that the probability of door 2 being opened is different depending on where the money is. It should be possible to determine a new probability for where the money is, based on which door was opened. If we want to know how likely it is that the money's behind door 1, we write it like this, the probability of the money being behind door 1, given that door 2 is open. To work this out, let's start with the formula for anding together dependent probabilities we worked out in the last video. By rearranging this, we can get a formula for a dependent probability. Intuitively, this formula is saying that the probability of A given that B has happened is equal to the probability of A and B happening rescaled to take account of the fact that B has actually happened. It's important to note now that the probability of A and B happening is the same thing as saying the probability of B and A happening, so we can switch these around. Also, we can reuse the formula from before to see that the probability of A and B can be written like this. By combining these two formulas together, we get a new formula called Bayes' theorem. This formula allows us to update a probability based on new information. In our case, we can update the probability of the money being behind door 1 based on the new information that door 2 was opened. The only problem is that this requires us to have a general probability for door 2 being opened. Fortunately, this is quite easy to work out. By making our doors opaque again, it's clear that there's no way to ascertain which door the game show host is going to open. We don't know where the money is. So the probability of door 2 being opened, given no other information, is 1 in 2. We can substitute all these values into our new formula to determine the probability of the money being behind door 1 is indeed 1 in 3. Though this is a fairly interesting example, the real gem here is Bayes' theorem, which is able to update our assumptions based on new information, something humans are very poor at doing. This is what makes the formula so useful to statisticians and to those who want to better understand the world.